Welcome back into the Sports Source, the segment of our program brought to you by Southeast Termite and Pest Control. Winter is finally here, and that means bugs and other pests will be looking for a nice, warm place to move in for the winter. If you don't want your house to be their top choice for a bed and breakfast, call Southeast Termite and Pest Control just like I do. They've been around for more than 40 years. Family-owned business right here in East Tennessee, Southeast Termite and Pest Control. All right, got eight questions here about the Vols in a segment called Take Your Pick. About 30 seconds to 60 seconds on each. We'll see closer to 30 maybe, but I'm just going to write down the panel here. Mike Strange. Yes. Take your pick. Was the coaching staff's bigger mistake not running Josh Dobbs more or not using Juwan Jennings in the secondary sum, a la Carl Pickens? I'm going to have to go with a bigger mistake being not running Josh Dobbs more because we saw a lot of evidence of what he can do and is – Jo Juwan Jennings' safety, I think we, you know, I only remember seeing one play, and it was a good play yeah. at an interception, but based on the body of evidence, I would have to go with the decision not to run Josh Dobbs more because we saw so many times what he can do. I watched the Ohio State game, and granted it went into overtime, but Ohio State ran JT Barrett 30 times. 30. I mean, that is not something Tennessee did with Dobbs, and he is so electric. I wonder how many 200-yard rushing games he could have had if they chose to use him that way. That's not to say that Jawan Jennings couldn't have helped him at safety. Yeah, I think I would have tried both of those. All right, uh, Will Overstreet, take your pick. Was the coaching staff's bigger mistake not moving Jalen Hurd around to keep him happy or not using Alvin Kamara and John Kelly more earlier in the season? Not using Alvin Kamara and John Kelly more. I think we clearly have seen, you know, there's some – not clear evidence before for the outside looking in of was Jalen Hurd a chemistry problem or not. I think clearly after he left that was shown. I think you saw what you had in the backfield beyond him. So I think figuring out how to use them more throughout the year was the bigger mistake instead of trying to keep one person happy. You could have Cavalarist the question and said kill off the cancer by moving Hurd around but by but also use Kamar and Kelly more. But I'm glad you didn't Cavalarist. <laughs> All right, Mike Griffith, take your pick. Was Butch Jones' bigger mistake this year making this a player-led team? A lot of talk about that. Or was it changing his strength coach? <laughs> well, the, the Cavaliers thing's out there. I'm going yeah, exactly. to go with the, the, the strength coach hire was the mistake because if you get the right strength coach, then I think you get the right player leadership, you get the right mindset. The biggest thing that's got to happen for Tennessee, we talked about bowl wins, we talked about signing class, there needs to be a change of culture. This was a soft football team. They showed up out of shape at the start of the season. Collectively, obviously, there were some great players, and not everybody was out of shape, but the offensive line was a mess. They need to change the culture, and they need to get tough. They got pushed around by App State at the start of the season. They got pushed around by Vanderbilt at the end of the year. Uh, Rock Gullickson, the name that's getting kicked around the most in terms of the new strength coach, strength coach for the L.A. Rams. He uh, has ties to Butch Jones from their days at Rutgers. He also has ties to the father of Jared Garantano from days at Rutgers. Rock Gullickson could be your next strength coach. At least that's the name being pushed around in the rumor mill. Uh, Daniel Hood, take your pick. And they're really just doing this so I can put some stats up. Which is more important <laughs> in college football? Playing good defense or playing up-tempo and wearing the, other, whether wearing the other team out? Defense by far. Not even a question. Not even a question. I think you're right. Let's go to the graphic. <laughs> I thought this was interesting. Uh, top six, the top six teams in the playoff committee rankings going into yesterday were also in the top ten in defensive scoring efficiency. Of the top six teams in the playoff committee rankings, same top six, only Clemson ranked in the top 50 in terms of pace or tempo. The others were ranked 69th through 108th. Mm. I'm not a fan of up-tempo. I've said all along I think it's gimmicky. I think it hurts your defense. Those numbers tend to push that. I just Oregon's up tempo didn't help them much this year as they stumbled to four and eight. If I were if I were Butch Jones, I'd worry more about my defense and less about up tempo. All right, next question, Mike Strange, take your pick. If Butch Jones could only keep one coordinator, who should it be? Mike DeBoard <laughs> or Bob Shoup? Well, based on stats from last year, he should keep Mike DeBoard, but I'm gonna say keep Bob Shoup. I just think that he, he almost gets kind of a pass for this year. I, I think based on his track record, I'd like to see what he can do with another year. Certainly an anomaly based on his previous yeah. work. But let's look at the numbers here. We showed these on Thursday. <laughs> I wanted to show them on Sunday. Look at what Mike DeBoer's offense did for all. And look, we've critiqued it all year, but we critiqued the fact that he didn't, we didn't like the way he used some of his weapons, okay? That doesn't mean you fire the guy. Scoring offense, number 26 in college football, number two in the SEC, 58 touchdowns, second most to Bama in the SEC, most since 93 for the Vols, 
All right, passing offense. Dobbs, number three in the SEC in completion percentage, which I didn't think was possible. Dobbs, number one in the SEC in touchdown passes. Could have had three more. He had two drops, and then the Jalen Hurd play at Georgia. Could have had 29. Running the ball? Yeah, they still had, they were the only team in the SEC with four rushers over 450-plus yards. Explosive plays? Number two in the SEC to Alabama. Oh, and they were number one in the touchdown to red zone uh, rankings as well. I'm changing my answer. There you go. <laughs> it was a stupid answer to begin with. No, no, I, I, I think you're probably, well, I don't know. That's, that's a, I wouldn't get rid of either one of them. Right. I certainly I wouldn't. I wouldn't either, uh, yeah. Right now. Okay. I wouldn't either. Uh, all right, Will, take your pick. Biggest problem for UT this year was team chemistry, injuries, coaching errors. Probably Cavaliers sing it here. Uh, coaching errors, because that could cure, cure team chemistry. Uh, and I think that was a big problem for this team. So I think overall it starts and stops. Who did you hire? Weight coach, coaching staff. You brought in a guy that wasn't as experienced. You could have gotten somebody better. So I think it all comes down to the, the coaching staff at the end of the day and the problems they had. They have trickle-down effects that cause all issues in all those areas. All right, quickly, Mike Griffith, take your pick. UT starting quarterback next year, Jared Garantano or Quentin Dormady? It's going to be Garantano. I, and I met this guy when he arrived in Knoxville at the Holiday Inn when he first reported, and I hadn't seen a look in the quarterback side like that since Casey Clausen arrived from California saying he wanted to play big-time football. This guy's here for one reason. It's not because he grew up a Vols fan. It's, it's not necessarily because Tennessee was the best place for him. He's here to win. He means he, This guy means business. I'm just going to tell you, this kid's a different cut. If he has the twinkle in his, in his eye of Casey Clawson, <laughs> that's pretty strong. Clawson was a hell of a competitor. He you, was. You, you joke. No, I've said that a thousand times. I joke that you really like Casey Clawson. That's what I joke about. Uh, All right. paid to do. He was good. <laughs> Daniel Hood, uh, last one, take your pick. Tennessee's new athletic director has to be an, a UT guy or doesn't have to be a UT guy? Doesn't. He doesn't have to be. You go out there and you, you get the guy that's the best for the job that's going to run, run the program as it needs to be to get you to back to the na national level. Good answer. Now, if it happens to be that the best guy is a UT guy, Take him. best of all worlds, Thomas. but Thomas. don't limit your options just because of the diploma on some guy's wall. All right, still should be David Blackburn. Now, when we come back, Tennessee basketball with Mark Pankratz. Could this team surprise? What is the number one uh, issue they have to fix a little later? Will the negativity over football carry over into basketball season? Then we got more football. We got heads nodding yes. Then we've got bowl projections. So plenty more to come on the Sports Source. Come on back. <laughs> 